Hi folks, welcome to my Habit Retro Journal. It's everyone's favorite video. We're going to do a little bit of an unboxing because I have a bunch of packages that have come in. Uh, and it's all stuff I've ordered, but yep, all for the channel. Um, so let me uh, start. I'll start with this one right here. Um, very heavy. Um, let me... I'm going to have to tear this open uh, off camera. So just a second. There you go. Uh, so what these are, are um, there we go. Uh, just a box of floppies. Um, and uh, they were very, 25, very inexpensive. So just to get things going on my Amiga, I needed uh, some floppy. So I think these were like eight bucks for 25, which is a pretty good deal on eBay. Thank you, eBay. So I'll be using this. Um, I mean, eventually uh, on my Amiga, I will get an internal disk um, IDE, SD IDE. But for now, having a, some floppies, I really only wanted like, five but this was so inexpensive i got a whole box again it's a green disc i think they recycle uh, or refurbish discs so lifetime guarantee all right and then uh i've got this package um just covering my own uh this is a uh there you go. i've already cut, cut it open i was curious what this was but uh What this is, it's a book that I bought. Uh, 68,000 uh, pocket, family pocketbook. And uh, the reason I got this uh, is because, um, so I finally decided to buy a Pi Storm and I'm going to put uh, it on my Amiga 600, but I'm also gonna try to hook it to the QL. So uh, I'm gonna give it a try to do a, at least a, a create a physical connection to it. So the, the one I'm going to get for the Amiga 600 is actually the original Pi Storm version 2. And then there's a, um, a PLC to uh, um, dip socket converter that somebody made. I'm going to use that. Uh, there is a, a, an Amiga 600 Pi Storm direct socket board, but uh, I, I want to get the one that I can also then try to put on the QL. So this, this is, um, and uh, somebody said this actually... Let me take this off camera for a second. Somebody said this mentions the QL in there. Uh, ah, it is. So uh, if I were to um, uh, I don't know if you can see it or not, but it says Sinclair QL page uh, uh, 56. So uh, actually mentions uh, the QL. So good. Got a 68,000 uh, assembly book. Uh, so I'll keep for the end. Uh, we have, um, I know what's in here as well. So let me uh, open this up off camera. And there we go. Um, so, what this is, is, um, so I, did a video recently on uh, getting um, my uh, old um, parallel interface uh, zip drive working on, on a, an IBM, well, on a Dell laptop. What I want to do, however, is, is try to get that to work on my Amiga 600. And so I, I got these, were also inexpensive five inexpensive 100 megabyte zip disks so that I can uh, create a hard disk uh, image. Now again, I'm, I'm going to get an SD uh, IDE interface, but as I said in that video, I really like this idea of uh, old uh, magnetic medium. And I only had one extra one of these, so really wanted a couple extra ones, uh, and I ended up getting five. I might sell these other three since I only need two. Um, put them back on eBay for somebody else to have. But yeah, uh, 100 megabyte zip disk. So 
that's going to be very useful. Let me take that off camera. Uh, two more items, and this is the big ticket item, so let me do this one first. Uh, so again, I'm going to have to uh, open this up on camera, so hold on. And I know what this is. Something that I ordered. And uh, very nicely packaged. Thank you for your purchase. Oh, that's nice. Um, so what this is, um, is a um, T, uh, Texas Instruments uh, um, TI Link. And, and it's the old school kind, uh, not USB, but uh, uh, serial port. And so what this lets you do, let me show you this here. Let me just grab my calculators. So I've got these two Texas Instruments calculators. Uh, and they have their own little network link and then this allows you to actually hook To your text instrument so you can go from your computer and Instead of getting USB I got the old uh, DB9 because I can use my QL Write some software maybe and do an interface for that. So that'd be a fun project Got this for really inexpensive and uh, so yeah, uh, that's gonna be a future project uh, and uh, I'm most excited about this. Found this, uh, someone posted this for like 35, 37 British pounds, or 35 British pounds on, uh, on Facebook, on the um, Sinclair uh, site. And uh, I, uh, yeah, I, I bought it and shipping was like 20 some, so it wasn't that expensive. But what it is, I kind of took a peek in it. Make sure that it didn't come broken, but I haven't done anything else with it yet. What this is... is another spectrum from the UK. And this one works, but doesn't have a keyboard memory. In fact, the other nice thing is he actually had, somehow he got this off and uh, has tape and everything on it for me to use. And then there is no membrane on this. However, um, the other one I have that I can't get to work, which um, I have the board right here. And I've been trying to debug and debug this. And, you know, I've, I've basically... Uh, put sockets for everything and I my belief is that it's probably this I even modded this one to add a EPROM adding the appropriate whatever the mods are done. I think it's there under here um but I'm thinking it's the bad ULA so I, I want to I'm going to end up taking this one and putting it in this one to see if it works because that's the only chip I haven't tested but so I couldn't get this to work this is only a 16k one anyway and so I ended up buying this one and the other one came actually with a, a not a brand new membrane but it definitely wasn't the original one it's a much more robust one so what I need to figure out is the um, top on the other one has a couple of scuff marks here and a little bit here and then the its um, top is mostly okay except it has a scratch right there so my question is should I try to remove the top on the other one to to get the keyboard membrane out and then use this because this is a much nicer one or should I just replace the the whole top part with and leave and keep this sort of as a backup once the other membrane goes because you know the the the, the top on the other one is actually okay like I said it just has a uh, um I think the keyboard, the, the rubber membrane is also a little bit more worn on the other one, but it, it just has a, um, it's a bit nicked here and it has a, a big nick here, whereas this one's almost perfect. It has a couple of indents you can see where I think he must have tried to force it off, but it's very subtle. Uh, mostly it's in nice shape. And then this part here is, is it, the white's uh, perfect and it has no scuff marks. On the other one, there's like a scuff mark right here. But 
um, what this claims is that this actually works. So let me um, reposition the camera and let's just plug it in and see if we can actually get this to work and plug it into the, supposedly uh, this has already, um, the seller had done the um, composite mod. So it should work on composite. So let me um, find a power supply and plug it in here and I'll, I'll set up the camera so you can see the picture better. So I might get my first spectrum boot. And if, um, yeah, if that's the case, uh, I um, might try to uh, do a video on that on April 23rd because that is when um, the, uh, that's the Spectrum's 40th anniversary. So let's see if I can do that. All right, let's uh, move the camera so that you can see this new Spectrum and, and the, um, the picture. All right, let me do that. I've got it set up. Uh, Composites to composite, and then here's the power supply. This is the same one I used for the other um, spectrum, so it should work. Uh, let's see what happens. All right, 1982 Sinclair Research LTD. I find again <laughs> no keyboard, but I finally have a working spectrum, so that's super exciting. Um, yeah, so I'm definitely going to have to. Uh, give this a try now can i um should i just temp uh, quickly put in the other keyboard just to see if it'll work um yeah i think we should give that a try so let me do that let me find the keyboard for the for the other one and i'll open this one up briefly and then we'll see if we can actually uh put uh put the top of the other one on this to see if we can actually start typing on that all right let's do that so I've got the, uh, this is the other top, and it's, uh, again, it's not in as good a shape. You can, there's a, you can't really see this, but there's a, a few scratches here, and then the bottom here. I, I put some black uh, Sharpie on here, but it's definitely uh, not so good here as well and, and here. But again, it has a keyboard, which is in pretty good shape. Uh, and so what I want to do is um, open this up. Well, they're very gummy. Looks like there is uh, uh, one missing. And then the one right here. All right, and so then we can just lift this up because there's nothing on this side. Yep, this is completely empty. And then uh, this is the um, yeah, the new one. It has uh, memory, so not nothing socketed. Oh, okay. Uh, but uh, I guess they did the composite mod inside because I don't see any. Uh, I don't see any capacitor on the outside here. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put this plug the um, keyboard in and see if I can't boot this up. <clears throat> so. This should go, yeah, no. let's see how easy that is to plug in. There it goes, oops. I don't wanna, let me check out closer, okay. So, yeah, this should just go in like this. There we go. Okay, that's in, and then this should go in here like this. All right, I think it's in. Now we just close it up. We're going to once again hook up the video. And then the power. And now do we have, yep, print. 
Uh, is this like the ZX81? Where is the... I think it's... Nope. How do you do rub out? Oh, you gotta hit the... Uh, it's this key. Ah, it's different. Okay. I don't know where the... Oh, uh, I think it's under I. Oh, sorry. Nope. Um, where is the... Um, let me take a look at this one, which is a little better to see, but where is the... Double quotes. Um, boy, yeah, that's not easy to find. I find, uh, oh, it's under print. So, oh, it's lowercase too. Wow, look at that. Not used to this at all. So, H E L L O space world. Base quote, sorry, quote, semicolon, semicolon, maybe it's just keeping this to have a, <clears throat> is Z, that's colon, not semicolon, where is semicolon? Oh, uh, I see, oh, it's under O. Uh, I should probably... Hmm, how do you go? Yeah, this is definitely different from the um, ZX81. How do you go to the front start of the line? Uh, does this have, this must have something. Oh yeah, so sh shift five. So that part hasn't changed. Ten, and you go enter. 20, go to 10, run. And look at that, yes. Oh, okay, so that's a little different. Cool, so there's my first program. It looks like um, a break. And then you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. A, oh, A, B, oops. Uh, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. Looks like the keyboard works. Yay. All right. So um, I'm going to end here today. I just wanted to make sure that. So again, I could just use this key, this top, and not do anything. Or um, how do I get this metal plate off without destroying it? Would I use like a, a um, I have a hair dryer. Could I use a hair dryer to kind of pull it off? As I said, this, I mean, the plates look slightly different. This looks like it has darker lettering on it than this does. So this is a slightly different look. So I don't know what that means. Is this a replacement plate? Definitely has a little bit different color coding. But this is a nicer shape. But then again, I could just keep this as backup. Wait till this keyboard membrane breaks and just use it that way. Uh, so let me know if you think I should take this off with a, a like a hair dryer. I guess you would heat it up and try to peel it off without bending it. And then I could keep this as back, and I might use this. I think this keyboard membrane is a little easier to read. It's it's lighter. It's a slightly lighter color. Interesting. Um, so maybe this is just different variations of the same uh, one, different uh, runs of the model. I guess it has a... I can't really tell it from the camera, but there's a, a scratch there. All right, I'll end there today. Thanks for joining me, and um, I'll see you soon.